is Jay Colin the new Dr. Kevorkian for telling everyone to eat the fish? You gotta wonder. At least Dr. Kevorkian, you know, helping people that were seeking his help. They wanted to die and they wanted an early exit, so Kevorkian tried to make it painless for them. Well, here you got Jay Colin, and he's telling everyone to eat fish. From, you know, he's, he's helping you die, so he's telling you, hey, go, go eat the fish. He's helping you in your suicide, so... If you want to commit suicide, you can go ahead and take Jay Collins advice, who's telling you that he sees uh, not enough radiation to cause any concern for you to eat fish. So he sees no concern at all. And for the future, for your future siblings, he says that uh, they have nothing to worry about. So, yeah, so he's a lion, Dr. Kevorkian. But he's working on Kevorkian because he doesn't have the permission to help you die. So, I also just want to say a couple other things too that they took Dan Durnford's words out of context. Because what really what Dana was saying was in the future, hypothetically, the courts, when they look at all the data and they look at the lies that Jay Cohen told and the impacts of liars in the public who are supposed to be protecting the public that they're gonna look at people like jay call and they're gonna look at him and say this guy is a traitor to humanity in the future the courts they may rule whatever they want and he's thinking you know they might rule death the death penalty and you got to wonder what is the crime for killing the ocean what is the crime for killing most of the species on this planet and he's holding the data now, he never said himself, he never, Dana Durford never told his followers, he never said, hey, let's go kill him. That's bullshit. That never happened. He always thought at a future trial, that if this comes up and people rule on this, now we're playing this game of musical chairs, you know, with the radiation, you know, who who gets stuck with it? You see them moving the Hanford Waste back and forth from St. Louis. We're seeing fires taking place only a few hundred meters from a nuclear waste dump here in Missouri, and you have Bill Gates bailing on the people of Missouri just a couple weeks ago, how much money he made off of that mess, Missouri, and left those people all hanging. I think Bill Gates, people want to sell their house in Missouri, he should have to buy their property so they can get the fuck out of there for the mess that he created for those people. That's another one. I think the public, the future, is going to be very harsh on the people of this generation that decide to go with these decisions of more nuclear waste. And if they had a better plan, people might say, put up with it some more. But we want to put this nuclear waste underneath our Great Lakes. They want to put it right next to us, 50 miles away. They can't come up with any better plan. And then we see what's going on with Fukushima. Continued mess. They've let it get so bad. And then you have these people at the very end, like Jay Collin, when the musical chairs and everybody's grabbed their last chair, keep eating. Keep eating the fish, guys. And you can keep on eating it for several years, according to him. No problem. We'll see how the future reacts. I think they're going to be judging him very harshly in the future. And now, yeah, the court system, they're going to be the last ones to get on board, let's face it. And when they see the devastation, when it's left and right, and they're going to see people like Jay Collin as the scum of the earth. Levels that we were seeing, both in terms of atmospheric transport to Canada, um, releases to the atmosphere from the Fukushima site, and then what was predicted to happen, and what we were seeing offshore in terms of seawater contamination, those levels really aren't reaching the sorts of concentrations that are likely to affect the health of the marine ecosystem or, or people living here in Canada. Did you find that there was mostly a consensus on that, that there really wasn't much of a threat of nuclear contamination on the coast of B.C.? Well, contamination itself is inevitable. There's no argument that the ocean is contaminated from Fukushima. Well, contamination itself is inevitable. There's no argument that the ocean is contaminated from Fukushima. The question really becomes what the levels that uh, we measure in, in the environment and in organisms mean for the impact on their health. And and uh, the measurements that exist in the scientific literature for levels that are seen in, in the North Pacific and in, in fish, salmon, for example, that we've been looking at returning to our streams and rivers, the, the activities that we're seeing from Fukushima um, certainly don't represent a, a health risk to either the organisms themselves or people who, who rely on the ocean for recreation or, or for foodstuffs. And how confident are you of the science? I have quite a lot of confidence.
This is the worst survey we've ever done. Okay, so that was your motivation. You thought, well, I just have to get them the information they need, and that can help them. But you didn't find it was so easy, did you? What were some of the reactions you had from the public? It's an interesting uh, response. A minority of people respond with questions of uh, transparency with which projects are carried out. They question the integrity of the scientists. They question motivations of the scientists. And um, in most extreme cases, just outright reject evidence that doesn't fit with their view of of what the disaster means for um, North Americans and, and the health of the Pacific. But you actually went further than that, didn't it? You got some threatening responses. Yes, yes, I did. And so, again, the the perception is when people are afraid and they feel helpless, I I think it's it's a human instinct to uh, become angry. And uh, I definitely experienced some of that, uh, some of that anger. Like what? What, for instance, for example, what did you get? Um, Threats against my own health and the health of my colleagues and scientists in general. Some perceived uh, conspiracy of the international scientific community to uh, hide the impacts of this disaster. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, the response was that there must be some uh, financial motivation for scientists to be, in fact, lying to the public. So um, it was a very uh, a surprising reaction from, from my point of view. And how much of that did you get? Significant amounts. It's It's been ongoing since about 2012, late 2012. And, uh, you know, on the one hand, I appreciate the desire for the truth, for, for quality information. And these individuals uh, at base, I think, are, are motivated by that longing for quality information. But on the other hand, it, it really highlights for me a lack of scientific literacy in the public. And in fact, a, a lot of people are unable or not really equipped to determine what um, or to determine between pseudoscience and, and actual science. And so some of the blowback uh, that I've received just hinges on a fundamental misunderstanding about basic mm-hmm. things about physics and biology. Do you think that people don't trust the pure science of it, or do you think that they might have, that may have been earned, that mistrust, because they think that the, the information emanates from the, the, the nuclear industry or from governments or parties who have a, a vested interest in keeping the story the, the way they want it. I mean, can you understand why the public, some members of the public might not trust the information they're getting? I do understand. I do understand. And in this particular case, it really is kind of a perfect storm of, of a combination of factors. You, you have a large international governments, government science, a, a large uh, economic force in terms of nuclear power generation, and you've got ionizing radiation. Um, so whenever the public thinks about things nuclear, and you combine that with government and, and science, there's sort of a natural distrust. And communicating and communicating risk specifically about ionizing radiation in the, in the environment is fundamentally challenging because of that, that combination. So I do appreciate that there are scientists in the past who have misled the public. I, I'm thinking about things like cigarette smoking, uh, but... Uh, in this case, there's really quite a, a broad consensus among the international scientific community. And uh, I appreciate that it's a complicated issue, and I'm more than happy to take on the challenge of, of communicating what we're finding. All right. It's good to talk to you, Mr. Cullen. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. We reached Jay Cullen in Quebec City.